The Prophet Taker is one of three, um, I mean two, world bosses located on Orb Valis. It is currently a good way of farming credits, stand-in, and toroids for the Solaris Syndicates. In this video, I'll be teaching you everything that you need to know in order to defeat the Prophet Taker and my recommendations for the best weapons and warframes to do so. If you're interested in how to defeat the Exploiter Orb, I have a video of that on my channel and it will be linked in the card above and in the description below. In order to access the Prophet Taker bounty, you'll first need to be level 5 in the Solaris United Syndicate. After reaching level 5, you can start the bounty by entering the room with Little Duck and interacting with the table in the middle. The Prophet Taker boss fight is the last phase of a four phase special heist bounty that you need to complete in order in order to access the boss fight and get the requirements for it. If you're not rank 5 and you have a friend that is rank 5, there's a special workaround that you can use in order to access it. It requires your friend to tax you through all four missions by using the join command in the chat box. I'll be making a short video about this soon that will explain it in greater detail. Before you can complete the boss fight, you'll need an amp, a gravimag, and an arc gun deployer. You get the gravimag and the arc gun deployer from one of the previous heist bounties. You can get an amp by completing Saya's Virgil quest and talking to the quills. The amp that you'll start out with will be the moat amp, and although it's not very good, it will work well enough for this fight. You only need the amp to hit the profit taker, which any amp is capable of doing. The gravimag and arc gun deployer allow you to use your arc gun without the need for an arc wing. This is very useful for the fight since there are certain points where the Prophet Taker can only be damaged by an arc gun. The main gimmick of the Prophet Taker is that it has adaptive shields that can only be damaged by one damage type at a time. Because of this, you need a very specialized loadout when fighting the Prophet Taker. There are currently 13 different damage types that the Prophet Taker's shields can cycle between. These damage types are Impact, Puncture, Slash, Cold, Electric, Heat, Toxin, Blast, Corrosive, Gas, Magnetic, Radiation, and Viral. Since there's only 4 weapons that you can use in your loadout, you need to make sure that the weapons you have are able to cover as much damage types as possible. There are a few weapons that can do this exceptionally well, and I'll try to cover them as best as possible. But first, I'll tell you what Warframes I think you should use. The first Warframe that I'll be covering isn't even a Warframe, it's just Eclipse. Eclipse is Mirage's third ability and you can get it by subsuming Mirage to the helmet and then infusing it on your frame of choice. Even though it got nerfed a while back, it still provides a stronger damage buff than both Roar, Vex armor and other elemental damage buffs for this fight. You basically just have to put Eclipse on any Warframe that you want and they become one of the best options for killing the Prophet Taker. The Warframe that I think would be the best choice for taking on the Prophet Taker is Saren. Saren is capable of covering many damage types and when combined with Eclipse, she now has a very strong damage buff. Saren's Toxic Lash works differently from other elemental damage buffs, and instead of combining with the elements on your weapon, it does its own separate instance of toxin damage. As far as I know, she's the only frame that can do this outside of Zaku, who wouldn't be very useful for this fight. Saren also has access to the Augment Venom Dose, which infuses all of your weapons with corrosive damage. These two things allow Saren to cover two of the 13 damage types before even taking weapons into account. Here's a quick look at my Saren build. I'm gonna go into more details on it later, cause it's the one I use the most. All the builds shown in this video will be linked in the description below. So if I show it for a very short amount of time, you don't have to worry. You can just click on the link and uh, see everything you need to know. My second Warframe recommendation for the Prophet Taker is Oberon. While Oberon isn't able to cover two elements like Saren, he's able to heal, provide damage resistance and status immunity, and he can also imbue his weapons with radiation. Radiation can't combine with another element to make something else, so it's a better choice because you're always going to have radiation instead of messing up the elements already on your weapons. This is why I won't recommend frames like Volt, Frost, or Ember because their elements can combine with something else and ruin the elements on your weapon. Unless you're really good at micromanaging, it could lead to being a bad choice. I would replace Oberon's fourth ability with Eclipse so that you're able to keep all of his benefits while also adding the insane damage buff that Eclipse provides. Here is my Oberon build and it just focuses on having as much strength and duration as possible while also having Hunter Adrenaline for energy and Smite Infusion to infuse radiation to my weapons. The third Warframe that I recommend for this fight is Chroma. He's probably the most popular Warframe for open world boss fights, but he hasn't aged very well in my opinion. He 
He still, however, has a very unique mechanic that other Warframes cannot do. Chroma's Fort's ability gives him the chance to double the amount of credits received from enemies killed. This somehow works in the Profit Taker, and Chroma can be used to make this into an effective credit farm. Since Chroma already has a pretty strong damage buff, I wouldn't suggest replacing it with Eclipse. I would instead advise you to replace your first ability with Spellbind. Spellbind gives you status immunity so you won't be affected by knockdowns and the magnetic proxim profit taker. You can also replace Chroma's first ability with Smite in order to benefit from Smite Infusion. This way you can infuse another element onto your weapons while still being able to increase your damage by a large amount. Here is my Chroma build and it's very similar to the Oberon build I showed you guys earlier. You just focus on having as much strength and duration and that's about it. And that's the three Warframes that I will personally recommend, but you're always free to use whatever you want and you still should be able to complete the fight with relative ease. Also Rhino's a good choice. For the weapons, I'm going to start by covering my recommendations for melees and secondary weapons first because I find them the most useful in this fight. For melee weapons, I only have two recommendations, technically. These recommendations are the Redeemer Prime or a Zaw with Exodia Contagion. The reasons I recommended these two weapons are because they're both able to cover blast damage and they both have a ranged attack. In the case of the Redeemer Prime, its heavy attack is able to innately cover blast and impact damage, so you can build for up to 4 elements on your heavy attack. This is the build I use for my Redeemer Prime and it works with my setup, but you can always tailor it to do exactly what you want it to do. A Zaw with Exodia Contagion is able to do even more than the Redeemer Prime can do. So the way Exodia Contagion works is whenever you do a double jump or a bullet jump and you do an aerial melee attack, it sends out a projectile. This projectile is able to proc an even distribution of impact puncture and slash along with blast damage, the modded damage types in your weapon, and in some cases viral damage. The viral damage is bugged so it very rarely works, but you're still able to proc 6 different damage types from one weapon, which is like half of the elements that the profit taker you can cycle between. For the type of Zadi you build, you just need to make sure that it has a very high critical chance and it has a very fast aerial attack because that's what you need for Exodia Contagion. You can always just use your regular melee weapon and spam E at the Profit Taker's feet until it works. That works fine too. For secondary weapons, I also have two recommendations again, and that's a Tomb Finger Kit Gun and the Kuva Nukor. Both these weapons have innate radiation, which allows you to build for at least three different elements on your weapon. In the case of the Kuva Nukor, since it's a Kuva weapon, you have the choice to add an additional element to it to cover even more. The most logical and common choice is Magnetic, since it's harder to cover Magnetic in a different way. Here's a Tomb Finger build that's pretty standard, and here's the Kuva Nukor build, which is also fairly standard. If you follow the recommendations for secondary and melee weapons that I gave earlier, you should only be left with a few elements to cover with your primary weapon. This is normally some of the physical damage types and two or three different elements. Most weapons should be able to meet this requirement with maybe one element unaccounted for. There's only one weapon I'm going to recommend for primary weapons and that's the Zenit. You get the Zenit as a login reward and it has this unique feature where the secondary fire has infinite punch through. This becomes very useful later in the Profit Taker fight. If you don't have the Zenit, then you can basically run any other primary weapon that you like. It doesn't really matter too much. Here's the build for the Zenit that I normally use. It's fairly standard and it just covers the remaining elements that I normally don't have. The last weapon that I'll be covering is the Arc Gun. The Arc Gun is what you use your Arc Gun Deploy to summon and it's necessary for certain phases of the Profit Taker. I only have one recommendation for this because at the time of filming this video, the Mausolon is by far the strongest art gun that's available in the game. If you don't have the Mausolon, then you could just use the Imperator Vandal or the Imperator. It should be able to work fine, but it will take you slightly longer in order to get its health down. This is a build I use for my Mausolon and I built for radiation since that's the element that the Prophet Saker is most weak to. If with your setup you still have a few elements that you aren't able to cover, you can always use your Necromech and the weapons in your Necromech to cover those elements. The Necromech Arc Gun is different from the one you summon with your Arc Gun Deployer, so you can have a different build on that one. So the overall setup that I recommend is to run Saren with the Zenit, the Kuva Nucor, Exodia Contagion, and the Mausolon. With this setup you'll have the Exodia Contagion Saw, covering Impact Puncture Slash, electric gas and blast 
you'll have the Kuvin new core covering radiation, heat, magnetic, and viral. You'll have the Zenit covering corrosive and cold, and toxin damage will be covered by Sarin. Sarin also covers corrosive damage, so you could also use it on one of your other weapons that don't have corrosive. Here's a quick breakdown of my builds and the reason I use the mods that I do. For my Siren build, I use Vitality, Adaptation, Aerodynamics, and Arcane Guardian for survivability. I have Venom Dose there to add Corrosive to my weapons. I have Sure Footed to help with knockdowns from the Profit Taker. Prime Sure Footed would be better, but it can't fit on my build. Vigorous Swap is there to add another way to increase my weapon's damage. And Arcane Avenger is there for more crit chance, but it also increases my damage. And everything else is there for strength and duration for Eclipse and the rest of my abilities that require them. For my Exotic Contagion Zaw, I'm just going for critical chance, damage, and attack speed. Smite Corpus is there because the Profit Taker does take increased damage since it's a Corpus enemy. Prime Smite Corpus would probably be better, but I currently don't have that mod, but if I did, I would probably switch it in. My Kuvan Nucor build is as basic as it gets, it's just a mandatory mod and Viral Heat. And my Zenit is basically the same. It's just the mandatory mods and corrosive cold. Um, that's all the builds that I run. There's a lot of optimization that can be done to them, but I'm still able to kill the Profit Taker in like four minutes with them, so it's it's fine for me. With the setup out of the way, I can finally go into covering what you should be doing when you get into the fight. After selecting the fourth phase of the Profit Taker heist, you'll need to head to Orb Valis. Once in Orb Valis, after a few seconds, a waypoint will appear that will show you the location of the Profit Taker. It's best to use your Arc Wing to quickly get to the location of the Profit Taker. Once you get to the Profit Taker, you'll notice that there's a symbol above the Profit Taker's head that tells you which element it can currently be damaged by. This element would change every 20 seconds on its own, or it will change after you've depleted 20% of the Profit Taker shield. You can also force it to change at any time by hitting it with your operator amp or with the paracesis. You just need to keep using the displayed element until all of its shields are fully depleted. When its shields are depleted, you'll enter phase 2 of the fight. In this phase of the fight, the Profit Taker's legs will become vulnerable to damage. These four legs can only be damaged by an arc gun, so you need to use your arc gun deployer or your necromech if you choose to use that. It's better to use your Arc Gun Deployer since Necromechs rarely benefit from Warframe damage increasing abilities. After you've destroyed all four Profit Taker legs with your Arc Gun, it will collapse to the ground and its main body will become vulnerable to damage. You just need to keep shooting it with your Arc Gun until you reduce its health to 75%. When you reduce its health to 75%, it will launch four pylons in different directions that you'll need to destroy in order to attack it again. The pylons will have a special shield around them that nullifies gunfire unless you have a weapon that has infinite punch through, which is why I recommended the Zenit. But if you don't have the Zenit, you'll have to physically enter the bubble in order to destroy it. You can just use your Operator Void Dash or your Arc Wing in order to fly near the bubbles and enter it and quickly destroy the pylons. If you're using an Arc Gun besides the Mastalon to fight the Profit Taker, then it's very likely that you use a lot of ammo, which will increase your Arc Gun Deployer cooldown. The way to overcome this is to either use ammo chain on your arc gun or to find a Terra Mancur enemy and kill them which will drop a pickup that will immediately reset your arc gun cooldown. Proteus Dispensary is also able to create universal ammo which will also reset your arc gun cooldown. After destroying all four pylons, the Profit Taker's legs will once again become vulnerable and you need to destroy all four of them before you can attack the main body. You need to keep firing at it with your arc gun until its health is reduced to 50% at which point its shields will immediately regenerate. You'll need to deplete its shields again by attacking it with the element above its forehead until all of its shields are gone. At this point you'll once again need to summon your arc gun and destroy its four legs and then attack the main body. When you get its health to 25%, it will now launch six pylons instead of four that you will need to destroy. After you've destroyed these six pylons, you'll enter the last phase of the fight. This phase is very similar to the first one, but now there's a five minute timer associated with it. If you don't kill the Profit Taker within 5 minutes, then you'll fail the bounty. You just need to repeat the same process of using the element above its head to reduce its shields, and then summoning your Arc Gun to destroy the legs and then the main body. After you destroy it, it will do a somewhat long death animation, and then it will drop the loot. 
If you're playing Chroma, wait until a little bit before the animation finishes and then place your other G right behind the Profit Taker and you'll be able to have a chance to double the credits. After you destroy it, it kind of like explodes in a minute or something. I've never actually seen it because I'm always at extraction by the time that happens. But yeah, that's something to note. During the Profit Taker fight, various Corpus enemies will attack you and they'll occasionally place beacons that will increase the world level. If you let it get too high, then the enemies can start getting crazy. They can be like the spiders and stuff. So you can either destroy the beacon or you can have a tanky enough Warframe so that you can ignore it. If you're careful enough and you move around, the three Warframes that I recommended earlier should have no problem surviving, but if you're careless, you could easily die. I always run Magus Lockdown and Magus Elevate on my Operator, which CCs the enemies and it heals me whenever I transfer it back into my Warframe, which is really useful. And uh, yeah, I think that's everything you need to know about the Profit Taker fight and how to easily beat it. I hope my recommendations help you if you were struggling with it before or you didn't know what to do. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to share it with a friend, leave a like and comment below, and if you really really enjoyed it, you can also subscribe because that helps a lot. And that's all.